At the time of the Exodus, God had rescued the Jews from slavery in Egypt and led them to the Promised Land. God's covenant with Israel was that they would enjoy His blessings as long as they obeyed the covenant, failing which they would be defeated by their enemies. But as time went by, Israel became less and less devoted to God, embraced idolatry, and repeatedly rebelled against God. Therefore, God used the Babylonians to punish Israel. This psalm is a lament probably written after Jerusalem's fall and the subsequent exile of Judah. Many were killed in the battles, and their unburied bodies were left to vile animals and the birds of prey, a terrible fate. Asaph did not deny that the people of Judah deserved God's punishment, but he pleaded with God to punish their invaders because of their cruelty, wanton disregard for lives and destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem. In Psalm 79, Asaph voiced a prayer of hope on behalf of all the Jews in exile, that if God had spared them for a reason, He will once again deliver them from the consequences of their sin and the sin of their forefathers. Asaph appealed to his glorious name and in his promise that he will never abandon his chosen people. This psalm, which began in heart-rending despair and anguish, ends with a note of hope, praising God for his boundless mercies and in anticipation of his deliverance from their oppressors. Like the Israelites, we too need to come before the Lord in repentance and receive his forgiveness for our sins and be restored back to him our ever-loving and faithful Heavenly Father. Psalm 79, a psalm of Asaph. O God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubble. They have left the dead bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the sky, the flesh of your own people for the animals of the wild. They have poured out blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury the dead. We are objects of contempt to our neighbors, of scorn and derision to those around us. How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and devastated his homeland. Do not hold against us the sins of past generations. May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Help us, God our Savior, for the glory of your name, deliver us and forgive our sins, for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? Before our eyes, make known among the nations that you avenge the outpoured blood of your servants. May the groans of the prisoners come before you. With your strong arm, preserve those condemned to die. Pay back into the laps of our neighbors seven times the contempt they have heard at you, Lord. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. From generation to generation, we will proclaim your praise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope we have in you, hope that we do not deserve, when we turn away from you in our disobedience and willfulness. Open the eyes of our hearts to know that you are the one true God who loves us and want to bless us with the fullness of life, that we will confess our sins before you and seek your forgiveness, that you will restore us back to your loving embrace because we are the sheep of your pasture. In Jesus' most precious name, Amen.